Hello, this is Dr. Advocate Sheetal Baba. This session, we shall be discussing about what are void bequests. Now, in our earlier sessions, we've already talked about the concept of will. We've discussed what are rules for execution of a will for privileged as well as, as, well as unprivileged will. We have also discussed construction of will. Now, we talk about um, the bequest, concept of bequest and what are void bequests. Now, when it comes to any kind of transfer or devolution of property under a testamentary succession, we call such kind of transfer as bequest. So, a property is bequeathed through the testament or through the will by the testator to the one who receives this property. So, bequeath or bequest is nothing but transfer or devolution of property as a gift from the testator to any person. So, when it comes to concept of bequest, it is quite easy to understand what bequest is. Though bequest or bequeath is not been defined under Indian Succession Act, but the literal meaning of this word is the legacy. So, it is usually the one who receives the property from the testator. We say the bequest is given by the testator to that individual. So, it is nothing but a gift given by the testator through legacy. And have this legacy when we concern to void bequest, this legacy is through testamentary succession. So, when we are talking about void bequests, we especially are focused on chapter 7 of Indian Succession Act. Especially, we shall be talking about section 112 to section 118. All of these sections give us certain incidences where it becomes legally impossible to transfer the property to certain individuals who are mentioned by the testator in his will. Say for example, a person is not born or person is predeceased or there are certain other occasions wherein we say bequeath is uh, in so many number of people that it does not calculate the legalities or it does not suffice the legalities or legal requirements for such transfers. So let us see what all these occasions or incidences are which make a particular transfer by bequest void and this is how we discuss what are void bequests under Indian Succession Act. Let us start with section 112. Section 112 of Indian Succession Act basically talks about a bequest which is made by the testator to a person whom he has described particularly. However, there is no existence of such person uh, at the time of testator's death. Now, in this situation, we say bequest is void because description is particular person needs to be of that description and there is no existence of a person who is matching the description uh, whatever has been given in the will by the testator. In this case, under section 112, we say the bequest is void. However, there is one exception given under section 112. Let us see what that exception is all about. Exception under 112 talks about deferring of the bequest. So basically, exception is nothing but an instance wherein the testator has particularly described someone under the testament or under his will. However, he has a prior uh, interest levied upon some another person. Then, because of this deferred time, this is a time rather wherein we can find out, the executors can find out the person who has been described particularly by the testator uh, till the death of the person in whom the prior interest is imbibed. So, exception talks about not only prior interest but by any otherwise manner if this transfer or if this bequest is deferred till the death of this prior interested person then we say 
that that particular person who is described by the testator may come into existence till the lifetime of that prior interested individual and hence this differing time is also we can consider as a breathing time. And there we say the bequest is not, not totally void because there are chances of this descriptive individual or particularly described individual to come into existence. Now let us see some illustrations of both of these situations because 112 gives us two situations. One situation is quite negative situation because in that incidence we say the bequest is void. So the very first situation discussed under 112 is all about void bequest and it states that if the transfer is to be made by the will of the testator or desire or intention of the testator to an individual who he has particularly described is not in existence at the time of the testator's death then we say the bequest is void let us illustrate this Say A is the testator and he by his will declares his intention to transfer whole of his farm to B. He describes who B is. Say he describes B as the eldest son of C. So in his will A states that whole of his farm after his death shall go to C's son, eldest son B. However, at the time of testator A's death, there is no son born to C. In this case, we say bequest to B is void. And this is void initio because there is no presence of that particular individual who is particularly described by the testator as C's eldest son. And C does not have any son at the time of the testator's death. This illustration we can take it by other ways also. A the testator wants to give all his property especially the farm to B. Who shall be C's eldest son but C has two daughters. Now the description is quite particular that this will go to the eldest son of C. Sure even if C has children and daughters we are not going to consider them as um, the one who gets the property through this will because the description is absolutely particular about gender of C's children. A specifically wants to transfer his property after his death to eldest son that is male gender child that to eldest of C. So here we say the bequest under this particular will is void. Let's see what exception and illustration of this section is. Under exception of section 112, we talk about the bequeath or the bequest which for whatever reason is deferred. This deferring of time is from the testator's death up to certain um, incidents. So let us say, let us take an example of the prior interest. So A bequeaths his property to C for his lifetime and after C the whole property he wants to be devolved upon D. Now here D is the eldest son of C and the testator has specifically specified that property shall first go to C and then to his eldest son D. However, at the time of death of testator, that is A, C was born, C was married, but there was no son of C who survived or basically who took birth, let us take in that way. So, when we are talking about C being alive, C being surviving A, but 
at the death of the testator there was no son born to see so we talk about that deferring of time now when we talking about prior interest we consider that property shall remain in someone's hand as an absolute interest for only considering the enjoyment that is c so property after death of a shall go to c so c is already present in surviving scenario however there is no son who is born to c so let we take a chance and see in this deferred time because life interest of this property is given to c so for his lifetime that property shall be enjoyed and entitled to c which after his death shall go to his eldest son now there are two chances if d the eldest son is born or maybe the only son who is born to c in that deferred time then the property shall be not considered as a void bequest however if there is no son born till the lifetime of c then this bequest is void bequest so concluding what is section 112 we talk about simplifying the that 112 talks about the property to be bequeathed or the bequest to an unborn child in case where the bequest when uh, is made to an unborn person rather we say this kind of bequest is void let us say other instances of void bequests section 113 is as per me an extension of section 112 especially when it comes to exception of 112 we say it is more related to section 113 and how's that section 113 basically talks about um, a bequest made to unborn person subject to the prior interest however this is what the exception also talked about however while we talked about the exception the exception under 112 it specifically discussed about the deferred time and existence of an unborn person um taking birth in the lifetime of the prior in, uh, prior interested individual now as an i said 113 is extension of this exception we are talking about one more mandate when it comes to a uh, bequest or bequeath to an unborn person subject to prior interest how is that section 113 speaks about there can be Uh, a transfer of the property or devolution of a property on a person who is yet to be born subject to prior interest but if this bequest is to be considered not as void or as valid bequest the interest in this unborn person shall be the last interest for the lifetime of that individual so absolute interest in this property shall compulsorily or mandatorily to be devolved upon this unborn person now when i mean to say unborn person the um, condition is this person is unborn at the time of testator's death with subject to prior interest so let us illustrate this say a is a testator he made a will through which he made a legal declaration of his intention to bequest his property to b who is his son for his lifetime only so a transferred the property by will to b only till b's lifetime so interest of the property in b is limited interest after death of b the property by a is transferred to c who shall be the eldest son of b sure at the time of death of the testator that is a c wasn't born so we just talking simplifyingly uh, about the exception 
we go more into the details under section 113 which is different from exception of 112 and that point is once the prior interest or the person who has prior interest in the property dies the interest in that property which is devolved upon second individual who was not born in the lifetime of testator or specifically at the time of death of the testator the property should go absolutely in hands of c that is later uh, bequeath or later bequest that is what a compulsory or mandatory thing which clears whether this bequest is void or this bequest is valid there is this point which needs to be sufficed under section 113 we go beyond 113 on 114 if you move on to 114 i say it is again an extension of 113 because 114 speaks about a rule which you shall be studying in transfer of property as well this rule is called rule against perpetuity so no individual by any means can transfer the property to n number of people for their lifetime and this goes in perpetuity so say for example a is a testator who wants his property to devolve on b and then after b's lifetime he wants to devolve his property on c and then after c's lifetime he wants to devolve the property on d then after d's lifetime he wants his property to devolve on e and so on he has 15 number of people in line wherein he says that this is what the devolution of property should be so when we calculate these 15 people in sequence these are the people who does not have absolute interest devolved upon them it is only life interest so the question is up to what point you can have the life interest imbibed by will onto these receivers of the property can it be perpetually made the answer is no section 114 of indian succession act speaks absolutely negative about the situation it says there cannot be transfer in perpetuity there has to be some full stop to the transfers especially upon the unborn persons so rule against perpetuity gives us a simple equation the rule talks about lifetime of one or more persons but then these persons should be in existence at the death of the testator and it can go beyond only up to the age of majority of that individual on to whom or upon whom this property is devolved which we consider as an unborn person the age of majority of an unborn person can be the lastest as per rule against perpetuity so let us take an illustration a the testator wants to transfer his property to b his eldest son for his lifetime then upon c his next son younger son for his lifetime and then two younger sons son for his lifetime and then to his younger sons sons son for his lifetime now in this case c's younger son is not born his sons sons son may be born or not we don't know so as per rule against perpetuity we just considering the transfers as valid or bequests as valid only up to three lives life of b because he is present or he is surviving at the time of testator's death c because he too is surviving the testator a and then we read section 112 with 113 and 114 seeking this deferred time because at the time of testator's death c's 
younger son. C's eldest son was not also born. So we don't know chance of C's younger son to be born. So whichever son will be born in the deferred time shall receive the property as absolute or as um, based on whole interest of that property and it cannot go beyond as the legacy. So the equation given under rule against perpetuity is life of any number of people who are surviving the testator as at his death and age of majority is the only deferred time later on of the individual who is unborn at the time of testator's death. So reading section 112, 113 and 114, there can be a transfer on an unborn person only if there is a prior interest imbibed into any another individuals that too if these individuals are surviving the testator. So this is how we discuss rule against perpetuity under section 114. Now we know what are these rules and mandates under section 112, 113 and 114. There cannot be in perpetuity transfers made by the testator. So there needs to be um, some rules wherein the testator can transfer or devolve his property upon the one who are surviving and to an unborn provided he is born in between that deferred time. This is what we have already learned. Now 115 is something again I say is an extension to all of these sections read together. 115 specifically talks about class transfers. So say for example A has transferred his property um, for lifetime of B, C and D who are surviving him. And then later on um, sequence wise eldest to the younger to all the children of B, C and D. Now we say these are class transfers because B, C and D are from same generations and after their lifetime the property shall devolve upon eldest to youngest children of B, C and D. Sure it is quite not possible because some of the transfers are void due to rule against perpetuity or some of them might fit under 113 because there might be one uh, upon whom the prior interest is devolved. He is no more. There might be individuals who are not surviving the death um, at the death of the testators as well as the death of people who have prior interest in the property. So, in this case, 115 gives us a simple equation stating as to whatever fits under 112, 113 and 114 shall be valid bequests because that does not violate any of the mandates laid down under 112 to 114. But these are called class transfers or people, class of people upon whom interests can be transferred. Later interests levied upon those class of people who violates or infringes the mandates laid down from 112 to 114 shall be void bequests. So these are sections basically extension of one or another. When we discussed 112, when we discussed 113, 114, these are nothing but extension of the earlier sections. Here also 115 states wherever class transfers or bequests are made and some part of this class transfer, classes group of people, group of people, class of people is something 
which does not violate any mandates then they are valid bequests however when any of the rules specified from section 112 to 114 especially 112 and 113 are violated then only that part of bequests are considered to be void 116 again is extension of 115 rather it is extension of all of these from 112 to 115 uh, now why do i say so because 116 specifically talks about a situation where prior interest has failed so say for example if you're sufficing all of the norms and mandates laid down till um 115 section we say all of the bequests are valid so say suppose let us illustrate this a the testator wants to transfer his property or bequest his property to b after his death for his lifetime and then on c who is yet to born so we talk about a prior interest here and deferred time which is exception under 112 explanation Uh, as well as exception under 112 now when we talking about this prior interest say for example immediately after death of a b dies then we say the later interests are not to take effect and b's legal representatives rather will take over the property instead of uh, all of the intentions declared by a in his will because prior interest has failed b dies immediately after a that means there are no chances of b begotting a child and c is supposed to be b's child sure in any another circumstances where prior interest has some or the other way failed or an individual who had prior interest in the property has failed due to any of the reasons to acquire that property then all later bequests are considered to be void under section 116 let us move on to section 117 which talks about accumulation section 117 gives us an instance wherein um not the property is bequeathed or the bequest is concerned to the property but the income of the property so 117 specifically talks about an illustration where a the testator wants to transfer the income accumulated through certain properties to certain individuals however section 117 says if such kind of accumulation of income violates the norm or rule of perpetuity then such kind of bequests concerned to accumulation of income in concerned particular properties shall be considered as void because they are violating rule against perpetuity and it is going beyond the lifetime of the one who were present or who was surviving the testator and 18 years beyond 18 years the accumulation is to be considered and devolved upon others we've seen the equation under rule against perpetuity it can be n number of people who are present or surviving at the time of testator's death they can have the life interest but later on the life interest cannot go beyond 18 years because we talked about majority of the first who was unborn at the time of testator's death so if in case not only property devolution but property's income is concerned through accumulation then also the bequest is void only to later interest which violates rule against perpetuity that is lifetime of one or more individuals surviving the testator plus 18 years of or uh, let us consider that as age of majority of that last individual so this is what section 117 speaks about and the last occasion of void bequest is where a person transfers all of his property to a charitable trust where he has his kindred surviving 
However, section 118 does not speak about all of such kind of transfers or bequests to be void. If in case, section 118 basically says, if in case if there is a nephew or a niece or any nearer relative that is kindred of the testator alive at the time of his death and he transfers whole of his property to religious trust or religious uses, then the bequest is void provided such kind of bequests are registered or are executed before, a, uh, before one year of the testator's death. And why is this basic conclusion? Because even if there are no legal representatives, only kindreds who are surviving this individual, then the religious transfers might violate or might disturb their inherited uh, or succession rights. And for this purpose, section 118 specifically mentions a time. If anyone, it doesn't say that no one can transfer uh, all or either of his property to charitable trust. Definitely, yes, in presence of all of such category of individuals surviving him or her. But then, the only criteria given under 118 is only those bequests shall be void in presence of these people surviving in case the will is not made one year prior to the death of the testator. So, in all of these cases from section 112 to section 118, we say these are incidences of bequests to be declared as void if they are not sufficing the mandates provided under respective sections. And 112 to 118 is nothing but extension of every earlier or prior section. So 113 is extension of 112, 114 is extension of 113 and so on. So these are all kinds of void bequests. Bequests to an unborn person, bequests to n number of individuals not resting the whole interest in the uh, lastest that is unborn person or bequest to n number of individuals um, with exceeding time of attaining majority of this unborn person in the deferred time or accumulations of the incomes to be deferred till uh, attainment of majority of someone who is unborn and so on. So basically all of these bequests are based on survival of last individual to the prior interested individual. Otherwise, all of these in, uh, interests or all of these bequests shall be considered as void. So basically concluding what are void bequests, void bequests basically are the one which puts uh, or which cuts that legacy in between because of someone's absence. It should go lifetime to lifetime till only the majority of the lastest who was not present at the testator's death. So this is whole uh, concept of void bequests under Indian Succession Act. Thank you.